back before Mass Effect finished itself off with all the grace and elegance of the last season of Game of Thrones wanking into a bin. Whenever I played one of those games it always struck me how you only ever saw that universe from the top of the social heap, from the perspective of a universally famous and respected galactic saviour who can swan about on the best ship ever, decking journalists with impunity and being extremely flighty about what his favourite store in the Citadel is. I always wondered what the Mass Effect universe was like to the average fuck, just about qualified to reverse their space van out of their own space driveway and deliver crates of flavourless nutrient paste to the worker cubes. How did they feel about Commander Shepard? Were they happy with the flavour of ice cream they got at the end of Mass Effect 3? Well I guess we'll never know now, since after Mass Effect Andromeda more Mass Effect is about as hotly demanded as the Jeffrey Epstein bumper fun activity book for kids, but don't pout cause Rebel Galaxy Outlaw is here, a game in the tradition of Wing Commander Privateer about being an average fuck flying a great big skip around the sci-fi future with only two major concerns, one staying alive and two not being dead. Rebel Galaxy Outlaw is set in a sci-fi universe with a frontier western vibe to it which I preferred when it was called Borderlands, which I preferred when it was called Firefly, which I preferred when it was called Cowboy Bebop, delete according to generation. Actually the main character, whose name stubbornly refused to adhere to my memory like a post-it note covered in dog hair, kind of resembles the main bloke from Firefly if they'd been played by Jamie Lee Curtis. What with the game flying the sandbox space sim standard, her job and moral code depend largely on you. By profession she's either a freelance law enforcer, pirate, bounty hunter, trader or perplexingly heavily armed postal worker. You can even have a go at being a pool hustler if you want, although I'd wonder why you bought an exciting space dogfight game to do so. Pool, slot machines, dice, all these little mini games you can play when you saunter into a space saloon for a glass of pickle brine are like a water slide attendant wanting to show you how fast he can solve a Rubik's Cube. Yes it's sort of impressive that he put the effort into learning but I only need to see it once and then I'd really just like to focus on going down this water slide thanks man. The water slide in this metaphor representing the exciting space flight sim that is the core of the game, one that I wish I'd indulged in a bit more player training. I was eight fucking hours in before I figured out how to stop. I was holding down the brake button you see, turns out I was supposed to press it repeatedly to bring down my target speed one chunk at a time. My target speed being the little random number buried in all the other random unlabeled readouts on the screen that could have been my fucking Cadbury's cream egg inventory for all I knew. Still, this is the sort of thing that's expected of a space sim cockpit game, there's something inherently appealing about sitting at a ridiculously complicated control bank, brings back nostalgic memories of visiting your dad at the building site and wanting to have a go on the wrecking ball. The same reason Steel Battalion used to be sold with a controller resembling the mixing desk of a very stubborn and pretentious DJ who knows full well that he could just use a laptop these days but looks down on people who do. And Outlaw Galaxy Rebels controls stop being intimidating very quickly when you realise that the core gameplay mostly boils down to point to the thing and go to the thing. You're probably wondering how I was able to get by for eight hours without knowing how to stop. Surely I would have needed to stop at outposts, to trade cargo, take bounties, sell crystal meth to local high schoolers depending on the path I was trying to forge. Well all you have to do is fly close to an outpost, or indeed aim your nose cone squarely at the outpost's biggest and most solid looking exterior wall and fly full steam ahead, and you'll get auto docked, fading out and fading up on the landing pad, which is a little disappointing. The fiddly nuts and bolts of takeoff and landing in games like Elite Dangerous aren't exactly glamorous but they add to the immersion, and sometimes after I left a station I'd drift too close to it while lining up my next navigation point and get sucked into auto dock again, for a Columbo style just one more thing. Blimey you kids go through crystal meth fucking quick. There's altogether a bit too much fading out and fading up in Galaxy Outlaw Rebel, it's also how the autopilot works, point to the second star on the right, click together your ruby slippers, fade out and fade up. Your playable universe is already comparatively titchy, I wouldn't be trying to make it feel even smaller, lads. But I'm assuming the intention was to cut out all the boring bits, the way you break up a long road trip by drinking from a thermos flask full of absinthe until you strategically black out. Bubble Bolloxy Outlaw clearly has a very specific tone in mind, judging by the way your ship's radio is constantly blaring all the young people's rock music that the crew too didn't already license, and how all the pirates you dogfight do the Borderlands thing where they constantly spout jokey dialogue in overdone comedy accents like it's open mic night on the original series Enterprise. All hallmarks of what I have come to call the magenta games genre, but while Burble Burble Burblore has a couple of magenta knickers hidden in its sock drawer it lacks the slightly desperate air of projected self-awareness that characterises the true magenta game. In fact I think my main problem with it is that it fails to go all the way in any particular area. See a game like this is either going to be a frantic high energy dogfight sim, or a nice calm meditative experience about getting crates of flavourless nutri paste to where they need to be like Elite Dangerous, the whole space trucking thing that I occasionally like to pair with a nice podcast for an afternoon's unwinding, and Double Bubble Bobble's attempt to balance the two falls short. For all its loud music, quirky tone and snipped out boring travel bits, the energy level just can't be sustained. And before long out came the podcast menu and down came the volume sliders. I tried to prioritise the story missions but they very quickly started taking me into higher threat areas than my ship could handle so I had to stop and grind up cash for a while with repetitive random crystal meth selling missions to buy a better ship. And that's not making it easy to stay engaged with the story. What were we doing again? Oh yeah, dedicating our life to revenge on the evil space pirate who killed our husband or goldfish or something. Sorry, I forgot, it was a while back. I've been clearing minefields and trading and listening to true stories from American history for the last six hours. Even the battling with space pirates got dull, since either I'd win from holding down the auto pursue button for long enough or I'd get sodomised into space dust because I was foolish enough to take a mission with a threat level higher than mild. So in the end I'd say Robble Gobble Wobble lacks both the energy for short term fun and the depth for long term fun. Play it for a precisely middling amount of time for a middling amount of entertainment and then go eat a bag of plain crisps 
while sitting on the middle part of a seesaw.